Welcome to Lesson 2, Section 3, A Practical Application. Let's review what we will learn. In this section, we will implement our banking application. We will first look at commands, events, and states. Then, we will see how to implement our actors. And finally, we will run our application. Let's start with commands, events, and states. Okay. Now let's see a real implementation. In this case, we will use Akka.net and try to implement a bank application we have discussed. At first, we shall look at the events. Since we are using Akka.net, and for the sake of simplicity, I will prefer a more object-oriented approach rather than functional. Remember, f -sharp also supports object-oriented programming. There is an also ongoing project that is called Aklik in Akka.net with f -sharp integration, though it is experimental and it has some missing features like persistent state machines. But feel free to check it out. So, for starters, I will review my event. And here I define a base class for my event, which is designated as type event in class and which doesn't have any members. Note that at the top of my class, I have decorated JSON object attribute and stating that the fields of this class should be serialized. By default, Akka.net makes use of JSON.NET serializer. In our case, we want to serialize fields because our properties will be get only. Speaking of the packages, before moving on, let's review what packages we have. If I open my project file, here I can see my basic structure of my project. This is an exe file and it targets .NET Core 2.1. I have the following files common, events, states, domain, and program. I have included my app settings file in .NET Core. We use JSON style files. And here are my dependencies. I use Akka, Akka Persistence. For persisting to a database, I use SQL Server, but feel free to use anything else. And also to tackle with the configuration, I use Microsoft Extensions Configuration and Microsoft Extensions Configuration JSON. And finally, of course, I'm using f -sharp Core. In our previous videos, we have already discussed how to create projects. So in my case, I have a bank solution and it has one console application project called bank. I will share this project through GitHub. Let's go back to the events now. So we are using JSON.NET. We are only serializing the fields. Let's look at what other events we have. We have amount reserved, which accepts amount as decimal and transaction string. Remember in our earlier discussion, actually, these are not type safe. I would recommend proper enriched types instead of relying decimal and string, you should really come up with some sort of amount or money type and you should come up with a transaction ID type. But for the sake of simplicity, I'm using primitives. My amount reserve event derives from the event as expected because this is the base class for my event. Simply I'm mapping all constructor parameters to properties. Notice I have defined a private constructor that takes nothing and it passes the default values. The reason is, when you use Akka.net with JSON along with f -sharp, it requires you to define a parameterless constructor. I have defined as private so that it shouldn't be invoked from elsewhere. Also note that all our events and commands should be immutable, which means once they are created, we should not be able to change their state. In case of the serialization process, there will be a slight exception that the serializer will invoke first this new method and will set the fields by reflection. Basically, the amount reserved event represents one part of the transaction which we have reviewed. If we review our previous chart, you can see the following events are defined. Amount reserved and reservation confirmed. Amount reserved simply denotes that we have not yet committed that transaction, but also we block that amount of money. Although it is not shown in that sequence diagram, we also have one other event called transfer rejected. This happens in case we don't have enough balance. Balance set is triggered when we set the balance explicitly, account created whenever an account is created, transaction created whenever a transaction is created, account passivated. We'll talk about passivation, but for starters, you have to know that whenever we are done with an actor, Suppose that an account has no pending transactions. We want to purge it from the memory. 
Similarly, whenever a transaction is complete, we want to purge it from the memory too. We use a mechanism called passivation. And these are the events that denotes a particular account and a particular transaction has no more pending jobs on them. Now, let's review the comments. Commands also very similar to the events. We have a base command class, which is also decorated with a JSON object attribute that denotes only fields should be serialized. Although we note that typically we do not serialize commands, except if they are passed to another remote process. And akka.net very well supports remoting scenarios as well. However, for our case, this is usually not necessary. Our first command states that it's about transferring money. So for transfer money command, we have source, target, amount, and transaction ID. Source simply denotes the source account. Target denotes the target account. Amount denotes the, the amount of money that is to be transferred. And transaction ID is some unique ID that denotes the transaction ID. And all these constructed parameters are mapped to the relevant properties. And similarly, we will have to serialize this transfer money command so that I have defined a private parameterless constructor for this. Second command we have confirm reservation. That denotes once our reservations are complete, we confirm the reservation and make the transaction finalized. We have another command called get balance, which can be used to ask balance to the commands, although it is not recommended to do so because we will tackle these problems in the read side. Next, we have set balance command. Set balance command takes an account ID and amount. And basically, the goal of this command is explicitly set some amount to a given account. Finally, we have the next two event that is thrown from account or a transaction that denotes it needs to be passivated which means it doesn't have any pending transactions. It has to be purged from the memory. And the next thing we will study is our states. If you open our states diagram once more, you will see we have the following states. At first, we start with start. And whenever we receive a month reserve, we move to target approving. And the next state we have, after to target approves, we move to source committing. And finally, we have target committing and our transaction ends. All these states have to derive from the interface that is called Akka Persistence FSM Persistent FSM IFSM state, which I have defined an alias for it. The start state simply all the states that are implementing this I state interface have to define a string, which I usually give the class's own name. My start state has the identifier of start, source committing is source committing target approving, target approving, and the others also follow the same convention. After defining my commands, events, and states, I'm ready to implement my actors.